So a lot of people are asking questions about getting started as a DJ. And what I want to do is we're going to start off basically, if somebody asked us, what would be three tips that you could give someone on things they would need to know or they should be you know, getting started as a wedding DJ? So the first of us is going to have the easy job because they can mention any three tips. The second person has to mention three that don't. And then the last person has to mention three that don't match the first six. Who wants to go first? I want to go first. Okay, I'll, I'll take the easy one. So, so the first thing I'm going to say is go back to last week's show and just watch that. And you'll have like 10, 10. or 11 tips uh-huh. right there off the top of the head because John and I talked a lot about this last week. And, and But in all seriousness, go back, check that out. Um, there were some great things in there to kind of help you get started, whether it's wedding DJ or just uh, DJing in general. Uh, but the, the second tip that I'm going to have, and we mentioned this last week, so some of this is going to be obviously be repeat, but, you know, be legitimate about it. Um, invest the time to set up the business so that you are protected, but also so that your client is protected, right? You know, a lot of times we set up contracts to protect us, um, but they should be wor- working both ways. So make sure you invest not in the Facebook lawyers, um, but in the legitimate entertainment lawyers so that you can set things up the right way. And then also make sure you're setting up a bank account so that your personal finances and your business finances are separate and you're paying yourself appropriately, not using your personal finances to fund everything with your DJ business. Okay. There's like three. There was three. Yeah, we'll have three-ish. Last, go last week and business account and then uh, the contracts. Okay, Cubby. Okay, so is it nine tips for your first wedding, or as you're starting your DJ? It's your first, career? kind of your first wedding or your career, either one. Okay, well, I'll, into weddings. I'll go. Yeah, okay, I'll do weddings. Um, prep, preparation, preparation, preparation. Um, all week long, practicing the names so that they roll off your tongue. Uh, if it's your very, very first wedding, uh, in your crates, in your in your playlist or whatever you're making, make playlists in case you have a brain fart. Um, you know, you, you forgot about songs, top 200 lists. Uh, there's a great one from DJ event planner. Um, of the top 200 most requested songs have that readily accessible. Uh, they also have, they've also have things from the eighties, nineties and two thousands. Once again, just if you're like trying to, you know, if you're, if you're nervous, uh, these lists will help you greatly that you can refer to, Oh, I forgot all about that song. Maybe you just forgot about a song or something like that. So preparation, create playlists prior to your reception, um, and do the best you can to relax, you know, speak calm, be calm about the whole thing. Don't be nervous. Don't, don't show that you're, it's your first wedding. Be very relaxed on the microphone, um, and have fun, have fun. Things are going to happen. Things are not going to go your way the first time at night, and that's going to be okay. But learn from those and move forward. Don't let it get frustrated. Don't do any major. Don't don't do any major mistakes. You know, you're going to have some mistakes. Just make sure they're not major mistakes. And if you do that preparation and you make your playlist and then try to relax as much as you can uh, in, in while making announcements, I think you will have a very successful first wedding. So getting started, um, I think you need to... Uh, it kind of builds off what Cubby was saying is I think practice is something that is that I think that he was saying preparation, but I think pr- the idea of practicing, practicing, as you mentioned, names um, and mi- mixes. And it's even to the point of going and having your cue points set uh, to be able to go and know where I'm going to mix out and know where I'm going to be mixing in. You know, there's going to be some songs because you can go to the DJ Van Planner top 200 that are the most requested songs. There's a lot of those songs you can kind of put into groups already because you know that they're probably going to be played at the wedding or requested or whatever, or they're going to go over well with the crowd. Putting these things together and practicing the transitions, doing these things in the, the in your studio or in your bedroom or wherever it is, is such great, great getting your confidence built up to know that, hey, I can, I can make this uh, transition from this song to this song and it sounds good. And I've done it so many times that I don't have to really worry about the night of of how I'm going to going to play my play some of these songs in these sets. You'll have transitions that you haven't worked on, but when you have some of them you've already done, you're going to feel much more confident when you're out there. Cubby mentioned the names. The names are a huge thing. I would go as far as to actually work on reading unusual books. We've talked about this in the past with uh, how to become better in a microphone. Go get some Dr. Seuss books. Check some out from the library. You're going to look like this weird, creepy uh, person, you know, bringing kids' books home. But, you know, as long as you're driving your van that says free candy on the side, you can get any kids' book you want, and there's no one is going to question your, your, your situation. 
But Dr. Seuss books are great tongue twister type books that are going to help you learn to enunciate and to speak clearly. And if you find you re- you're not speaking clearly, read it again and again. Out and loud. Out loud. And then you bring in like your nephew or niece or someone and then read it to them. And they're going to be like, if you're not reading it right, they will tell you. I'm going to add in uh, two that came in through the chat that I think are, are oh, yeah, please. good to go with what you're saying. Uh, Rocky adds, you know, using your phone to record the client saying their name and listen to it and say it and repeat it as they said it. Good. Um, catching it on the phone. Like I always tried to type mine out, but have recording that is going to be key. And not just not just their name, but also their their like wedding party names. Um, and then Robin says practice saying their name and then typing up a timeline to go with what you got. So those are, those are excellent additions as well. And timeline, awesome. and I was actually, uh, Robin, I didn't even see that. So that was where I wanted to go with that. My last is the timeline is to have kind of a plan for where you want to go for the evening. We talked about this a little bit last week, but the idea of having that, that timeline of when things are going to happen and have it approved or discussed with the couple so that you know uh, what to expect and they know what to expect. And there might be, it's not a hard timeline for most, most events, you know, dinner might be five minutes late. It could be a few minutes early, whatever it is. But the idea is that you have a time frame and a flow of what's going to come up, what's next, and then you can work your way through it. And that's one of the things that happens at times. And I've, I've been, this has happened to me, is that you'll forget some aspect of the day. And then I'll be like, hey, we were going to do the garter. And, and it's, you know, now we're in the last half hour. And it's like, we haven't done the garter. Can we throw it? And it's like, oh, crud, I forgot all about it. Having that plan and that timeline you know, all typed out and ready to go will be a lifesaver. Because even the best of us will forget pretty much everything at some point in time. Cubby, you got yeah, it. Yeah, it's upside down. As soon as I get done with my planning meeting with my bride and go, uh, couple, I actually literally send them a loose timeline. And uh, if I need something, in big bold letters, I'll say need song. Maybe it's a cake cutting song. Maybe it's a whatever. And then big bold letters will be, it'll be need song or whatever. And then that will become our email back and forth. They need to change anything directly. Um, I let them know that it is a loose timeline. Things out of our control can either make it go faster or slower. Um, but this is in the order in which we're going to do things. And I, I print out three of those, one for the venue, one for the photographer, uh, four if there's a videographer, then one for myself. So they're, we're all on the same page. And then I go over with them, uh, when, when each one of those vendors, you know, when I pass them out to them, just so we're all on the same page. And, um, I believe I'm the only one in my market I, or close to might be doing it. Um, it, it's just very helpful for, like John says, so you don't forget about something, having that timeline exactly where you're at. And then, I in in the Mother Sundance uh, song on my loose timeline, I'll put the father's first name in parentheses um, next to it, so I don't have to look to see what the father's name is. It's right there in my loose timeline, um, you know. And so I have to look for the mother's mother's name or the father's name for the father daughter dance. Yep, and that's always that's a good tip to have those there. Otherwise, you where what who I said again? Yeah, you're great. Yeah, who the blessing is, yeah. who the blessing or whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. always have those on your timeline, so you, you, it makes you it makes it a lot easier. Rocky mentions a. Uh, Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, let me do it. Rocky mentions, of course, uh, the timeline when you go through it, if you were doing a face-to-face meeting, and you can actually have the client basically sign off on it as a an additional step. And I know DJs who probably that would have saved uh, some potential issues and, and, uh, and a small claims court uh, situation if they would have had something like that done where the client basically signed off and said, yep, this is our timeline for the day. This is what we want to do. Yeah, I, I do. thought about it either that way. I do mine on Sunday. So the Sunday before the reception, uh, the Saturday reception or Friday reception, I put it all together and go, is this still your vision? Is this still your, your you know, is this everything? Once they approve it, I tell them, I, once you approve it, I'm going to start making my playlist and my scripts. So they've proved it. You know, they've looked at the, you know, maybe there's a different song of I'm Yours by Tyler Children and, and I'm Your and, and I'm Yours by Jason Mraz, right? So those are really close songs. So once they sign off on it, if they're paying attention, I said, look it over closely. And especially when you're going over, when you're going through COVID and we have bridal party lineup changes because maybe a groomsman caught COVID and somebody yeah. might have been out. So there's, I always check with, uh, with what's going on with the bridal party as well to make sure that the lineup is still the same. From Dan. when we met four to six weeks prior to the reception. Mm-hmm. Yeah, things had, can change. Dan, do you have anything to add there? Otherwise, we'll. Well, I was just going to say, when you're, you know, one of the, when you're first starting out, like one of the questions you're going to have is, well, I don't know how much time to put in for this. I don't know how much time to put in for this. I still do a loose timeline. Exactly as Cubby said, like my timeline is loose from the beginning. So the only t- things that I put on my times are when they're supposed to come in the door, when dinner is supposed to happen, and when we're finished with the night. 
Everything else is just a flow in the evening because those really are the only times that matter, right? If, if, if cake's five minutes later than it was before, who cares? Nobody right? knows. Like the cake isn't going to matter. Now, if food's 10 minutes late, 20 minutes late, then that might be a problem for the caterer. So the only times I really worry about are when we're coming through the door, when we're going to be served, when dinner's expected, and when we're supposed to be done. Any Anything else can can wait. And I'll take uh, Cubby's tip of printing them out. I'll go one step further. So I have two versions of my timeline. I have the one that has my script on it. And then I have a second page, which is just kind of, for lack of better terms, is this event, this event, this event, this event, all the way down through. Cut it down to just like a little quarter of a page or whatever. And I, if there's place on the head table for it, I will discreetly place it there in between the bride and groom if it's that, so that they have something to look at so they don't have to remember back to our meeting. I've had so many couples that love that idea just because it's like, oh, I didn't have to remember that. I just looked down and it was there. Or if, you know, halfway through the night, I can go back to that list. I can see it and they don't have to worry about it. I love that, Dan. Yeah. That's awesome. Good idea. Great idea. I learned from you all the time. Gentlemen, let's jump to the next question. 